We all knew it was coming, but Samsung has made it official. We're getting the Galaxy Note 10, 10 Plus, and the Galaxy Tab S6. And there's some pretty cool upgrades for illustrators and creative professionals. I'm gonna be covering some of those today. This video is sponsored by the dot space domain name. Choosing the right name for your website could be difficult, but choosing the right domain just got easier. Welcome to dot space, the first ever domain name that provides a haven for creative souls on the internet. Whether you're a freelancer, agency, artist, hobbyist, or just looking for a domain name that really inspires creativity, dot space is for you. Your domain name is your unique niche in the world. Imagine dot space being your space, a new beginning, a bright new canvas. Whether creating a new website or porting over your existing website, make sure you check out the discount code down below in the description. On to the video. It wasn't that long ago that Samsung press conferences were cringe fests, but they've become much better, and the one we saw today was really watchable. It moved fast, it was a little over an hour, and it covered things that really pertain to customers as opposed to stockholders. The highlight, of course, were the new phones. We got the Note 10 and the 10 Plus. I'm going to be paying a lot of attention also to the Tab S. 6, which is a follow-up to the Tab S4 that released last year, which is their iPad competitor. We saw some new watches, we saw a laptop. I am going to be talking about the laptop a little bit just because I think the design is kind of cool. But primarily, I'm going to be focusing on the phone and the new Tab. So, let's get to the phones first. Not a lot of this was a secret. We all knew it was coming. We even knew when it was coming. But the one thing that I really like about this new design is the punch hole camera at the top of the screen. I love it. I, I much prefer that they are embracing this camera, the front facing camera as a design element instead of hiding it in a notch. You're not gonna hide it. We all know it's there. Just embrace it. Use it. And overall, I'm just a fan of the aesthetic. You know, the fact that they're going edge to edge and really wrapping around the edges and the thing is, is basically a full screen, I'm willing to take a little camera dot at the top. There is one little thing is I noticed that the chin on these phones, it is, it is tiny. I know it is tiny, but one thing when I'm designing anything, I like to keep margins equal. So if there's going to be a little space at the top, I want it to be the same height is at the bottom and here the bottom is about twice the height and I know we're talking about like a millimeter but but it, it's different and because it's different it looks off to me I just wish that they had added a little bit more to the top to offset that or just found a way to kind of get rid of that little extra tiny bit of black along the bottom it bugs me probably one of those little things that when you when you have in your hand you're not gonna notice at all but when you're looking at screenshots you know looking at it from a distance you notice it there are two sizes here there's the smaller one the 10 but it's not really small it's just just small er and then of course the 10 plus which is the largest one they make now the fingerprint sensor is cool they've managed to find a way to get it underneath the screen and kind of hide it away so I'm, I'm curious to use that in real life like how well does it work when you kind of bury it under the screen if it works well I'm probably gonna prefer that over something like face ID now last year the S Pen added some Bluetooth features and primarily that was just added not so much for the drawing note-taking side of things but it was added so you could control the camera you could set the camera up and front of you and use it to like take pictures and things like that what's kind of cool about this year is they've taken those features those bluetooth features that they've added into that pen and they've expanded on it quite a bit there's more controls for the camera and, and things like that so that's kind of neat but they've added an accelerometer and some other fancy pants stuff into there to allow you to do like motion gestures and things like that at the presser, they had a travel blogger showing how she would use it, like with the little motions controls. And I gotta tell you, the whole thing reminded me of the old Wii remotes for the Nintendo Wii. Now, now I'm just saying, Nintendo's making mobile games now. I'm saying bowling on Android. Just, just think about it, Nintendo. I think it'd be great. Now, the one thing to point out is since they added some of these Bluetooth teachers last year, starting last year, they've also added a battery to the pen. So now the pen will recharge when it's nestled inside the phone. But one thing I should point out is that if you're using the pen to draw or to take notes, just generally draw on your phone, you're not going to need the battery to be charged up. So if the battery dies while you're using it, it's not going to affect your drawing ability in any way. The other really nice thing about not needing the battery just for note taking and drawing is that you can use another pen other than the one that comes with the phone. It is really nice that it sticks in there. It's with you all the time. However, it's thin. It's like drawing with a pretzel. Pretzel that won't break anyway. Samsung sells their separate S Pen, which is thicker. It's easier to hold for long periods of time. That was one problem I had that if I was drawing for more than 10 
15 minutes with that really skinny stylus, my hand would really start to cramp. So I, if I was going to use it for an extended period of time, I would probably have something else along with me that I would use, what, one of the older S pens or something like that. Look, I'm old. It happens. The other thing that I wanted to mention about the pen was they've added some features into their note-taking app. So if you jot down a note, it identifies your handwriting and it converts it to text. Now, it may still look like a handwritten note when you're viewing it in the notes app, but what that allows it to do is it allows to be, you to make those notes searchable within the app. And I thought, you know, it's such a little feature, but if you're taking a lot of handwritten notes, hard to tell them apart, that's a nice thing to have. As far as camera features go, they're always updating these cameras. They're getting better and better. It, it blows my mind how good the cameras they pack into these things are. Big thing they've added this year that interested me at least is some of the video features. For example, you can now apply that background blur. They had a name for it, bokeh effect. You can now apply that to video. We've been able to apply it to photos in the past, but being able to apply it to video is, is nice. I like having a nice blurry background behind me. I guess also when you zoom in, the microphone focuses on that subject. That was really interesting. I don't think that's something I would ever use, but I thought was really neat. And the other big thing that, that I will use, and I'll probably use a lot, is in some of my videos, I like to hold up my old phone and, and talk into it, but that's really kind of shaky. So now it's got video stabilization in there as well to kind of take out some of that shakiness. I know some people don't really like me using my phone like that, so I, I don't use it that much. But if I had stabilization, I would use that a lot more. So that is another thing that's really cool about this. And then there were a bunch of other little AR things. AR, I find fascinating. I think I have a failure of imagination when it comes to AR apps. I look at stuff and go, that's kind of neat. That's kind of gimmicky, but I can't really think of a use for that. So I'm still waiting for some app maker to really come up with that killer app for AR. Right now, I'm, I'm glad it's there. I'm glad they're doing this cool stuff. I'm just waiting for someone to really knock it out of the park and give me a reason to use it. So those are the Note phones. They're shipping on August 23rd. That's only two weeks away. The 10 starts at, I think, $799. The 10 Plus starts at $1,099. Okay, let's talk about this tablet. So they've added a couple things that we also saw in the phones. I think the most interesting one to me is they're using the same fingerprint reader under the glass, so that's a nice Nice touch. They've ended up putting two cameras around the back for video photo editing type stuff. Now the form factor, it kind of looks like, oh, what was that tablet called? The iPad Pro. It, lo it looks identical to the iPad Pro. They even copied the antenna lines. Why? As far as the Galaxy phones go, I love them because they're, they're kind of paving their own way, right? You got these wraparound screens. They're going with the hole punch instead of the tab along the top. So Samsung has proven with their other products that they have some killer designers in-house that can create some really amazing looking stuff. I'm just not sure why they don't do that with their, ta uh, their, their tablet line. They keep just swiping designs from Apple and I, I just don't get it. Even though Visually, it looks a lot like the iPad Pro. It's a little bit more rounded on the sides. Because of that, the pen sits along the back. I believe there's batteries in the back of the pen that kind of aligns it with the camera bumps. I saw a photo last week, and I'm going to have to look this up, where the case, like a keyboard case, actually has a cutout that keeps the pen attached along the back. Now, magnets were something that the Apple Pencil also did, but the Apple Pencil attached along the side. My initial thoughts looking at it along the back are, are two things. One, I never actually store my tablet face down because I don't want to accidentally scratch the screen with whatever's on my table. So off the cuff, it didn't exactly look practical to me. The other thing is holding it, and this is probably something I, I have to try out before I actually judge it on. With the Apple Pencil snapping to the top of the iPad, it's really easy to carry with you without having to worry about accidentally brushing it along your leg and knocking off the pencil or anything. And I wonder with it on the back, how strong are those magnets? How is how hard is that going to hold on and stay there if you don't have a cover for it? So I have a lot of questions in terms of just the placement of, of where they're putting it on the back of the tablet. One thing I don't know, and, and I'm guessing that the pen doesn't need battery, so it doesn't need to charge when it's attached to the back the way the Apple Pencil 2 needs to attach to the iPad Pro. It's possible that they're going to add in some of the Bluetooth features we saw on the phone, but I, I don't think they are. And the reason the iPad Pro was flattened along the side was specifically for that battery sticking. So they stole some of the weird things from the iPad Pro, but they didn't steal the practical things from the iPad Pro. Anyway, enough about design. I, I do want to say that I used last year's Tab S4, and I really, really like the hardware. I do think what held it back ultimately as, as an illustration tool, as a creative tool, were just the apps. You know, the Apple ecosystem 
it tends to be a little bit stronger. You've got Procreate, you got the Affinity software. You don't have anything like that on Android. You have some apps, some good ones. I've been using Artflow lately. Uh, that's really come a long way. There's still Sketchbook. You could do a lot of things with Autodesk Sketchbook. That, so there are some good drawing and painting apps out there, but I, I think the Apple or Apple ecosystem just has a big step up there. Now that we're factoring in Sidecar and some of the stuff you could do there, you know, gets, gets kind of interesting. But the S Pen itself, like I said, it's using Wacom technology. When you compare that, to the Apple Pencil, it compares really, really well. I'll have to see how the new one compares, but but the old one, it, it was a little bit lighter, didn't feel quite as premium, but, but the lines are really clean, the pressure worked really well. Palm rejection was good. Wasn't great, wasn't as good as the Apple Pencil, but it, it was good enough. So overall, the S Pen is really nice to draw with. In the press conference, they also talked a lot about Desk, D-E-X, or Dex. Not sure how to pronounce that one. I have to confess here, I don't know much about Dex. It's a productivity feature that lets you use your phone or your tablet as your computer. It's even got a like desktop-y looking interface to it. And I think the idea here is that you can attach it to a monitor or a keyboard, and then your phone is your computer. You can take it with you anywhere and then just use it as a phone or you could use it as a computer. Honestly, it makes a lot of sense as they start to flesh out this ecosystem around it. So this is something that I'm really looking forward to to play with when I get the phone and the tablet into review. So the Tab S6 is available on August 23rd. At least that's what was on the slide. I don't know if that means that it's shipping on August 23rd like the phones are. That's the implication there. But on a lot of websites, I heard that it was shipping on September 6th which means available might be available for pre-order. So that's a little vague. Be curious to see when that comes out. But when it does, I'll have a review up within a few days, maybe a week. The last thing I want to touch on was the Galaxy Book S. I think this is a beautiful looking laptop. It is a Windows 10 laptop. It is crazy, crazy thin. I Like I said, I really like the look of this. They designed it to make it look thinner than it actually is. But again, this just shows that when Samsung puts their mind to it, they can make a good looking product. And I've noticed this with a lot of other laptops as well. HP, for example, has been designing some really good looking products. You know, Dell's products don't even look that bad anymore. I think Apple stuff looks great. Apple nails the details, but they haven't really change. They've just evolved their laptops. And since everybody else has now copied Apple laptops over the last like 10 or 15 years, Apple laptops look kind of safe. And so that was my general thought when they were showing this on the video. I thought this is nice. This is just a cool design. I, I just love it when people do different things. I will not be reviewing one. Uh, I don't think it's really a creative tool. I mean, it's a Windows 10 tablet, so you could use any drawing or painting app with it. You know, you could do video editing on it. I just don't think that's what it's for. It's, it's designed to be an ultra book. It's designed to be ultra portable. It's not really, eh, I mean, you could use it a creative tool. Anyway, not, not really my bag, not gonna be reviewing it. But if you're interested, starts at 9.99, available in September. So anyway, that's what went on at the press conference. What was your favorite thing? Is there anything here that you're looking forward to, that you're excited about? What did you wish you would see that you hadn't seen? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.